so I've been having a little bit of a problem with my truck. It keeps blowing fuses and it takes out the backlighting to my instrument panel and it kicks out my tail lights. What it's doing is blowing fuses. So today we are going to figure out why it is doing it along with checking the tail lights, making sure everything's good in there, doing preventative maintenance, cleaning up uh, the ground that's on the chassis. And we're gonna try to hopefully figure this out that way I can drive at night. Now before I take this any further, I'd first like to start by saying that I'm not automotively inclined. I know how to do some things and what I have learned, I have learned from watching YouTube. So I'm hoping this video, if anybody has this problem, it will help them out. Now all the steps that I have done when it comes to taking the lights out, checking the bulbs, checking the ground, some of it's common sense. Like the ground is common sense. It has to have a good ground. If it's rusty, it's going to get a bad connection and there will always be a problem if you do not have a good ground. But when it comes to the lights and checking all the harnesses and everything, I looked it up. I went to forums, I read some forums, and it seemed like the consensus answer for my model of truck is to check the tail lights and check the harnesses. Now beyond that, I don't know. So what I'm going to do while I'm at the automotive store is to farther check the harnesses I'm going to see what I can use my voltmeter on or my multimeter. And I'm going to check my harnesses and see if there's any irregularities in voltage or amperage or ohms or whatever the case may be. Like I said, I'm not sure. So I'm going to get that information and find out before I start poking those needles into the slots and messing things up, possibly ruining the computer. So if you ever have any questions or you're doubtful of anything, do not try to do anything that you don't know anything about. Make sure you have the information. The last thing I want to do is start poking and prodding at these wires and fry my computer, fry my ECU, and make, say this is a $20, $50 project, I don't want to turn it into a $1,000 project. I've had computers go out on a car before, it was a nightmare. What that did was give me bad readings on everything. My car was running horrible. And I replaced part after part after part. I spent $1,000 on parts that I didn't need because I didn't properly go and take it to a shop, have it hooked up, and, and have their computer tell me that my ECU was fried and my computer was fried and that's why it was throwing me all of these bad codes. What we have here is a 1998 Chevrolet pickup truck. And if you recognize, it is the one that I got stuck in because it does not have four wheel drive. Here's something that I wanted to show you. Right here on my truck is the fuse panel. Pull that out. And on there, but it tells you, it gives you the information and tells you what fuse you need and what position it's in. But there are abbreviated names for everything on there. And when I checked, I went through and I was looking as some of these that I thought would be lights and stuff. Well, I didn't understand it said park and I thought maybe that was the parking brake. Well, that that's the parking lamp. So if you don't understand what any of these mean, always resort to the owner's manual. This is your best friend. When I started doing these fuses, I've only pulled the one and the four because the backlighting to my gauges went out so I thought hey maybe it was the gauges but it wasn't I looked in the owner's manual and I found that nine where it says parking LPS all of that is connected to one so my backlighting for my instrument panel and my tail lights are all connected to that so when I pulled that number nine fuse sure enough it was blown and that was the problem but replacing it didn't solve it because after I replaced the fuse and took off, I heard a click, and sure enough, it went again. So what I've done so far, is I've taken these two screws out. I'm going to pop this tail light out. I'm going to come over here. There's the screw there, and the screw there. I'm going to pop those tail lights out and see if there's any corrosion inside the tail light bulb. Maybe it's not getting a good current to the bulb. Maybe that's a reason why it is kicking the fuse and blowing the fuse out. All right, I have those screws undone, so we're going to pull this off and try not to break anything. It 
seems like there's two little clips back there along with a wiring harness. I don't know if you can see the lighting's not real good. So we're gonna pull this tail light out and we're gonna pop that harness off and look in the bulb. So now I'm gonna move to the other side. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna go to this screw right here. And we'll just back it out. Maybe. Might need some penetrating oil for that. I'm gonna hit it with a little penetrating oil and see if we can get those off. And when you pull them screws out, you don't have to worry about your tail light falling out. It's hooked to a harness and it's got the latches on the side of it. So it'll be secure when you take those screws out. The next thing I'm gonna check, is I'm gonna look in here on the female end and see, I'm not seeing any corrosion down in there. So that doesn't show me any indication that this is problematic on this part. And over here on the harness, I'm going to check in there. I don't see any corrosion that would cause me to be blowing a fuse. So I would have to say that my left tail light is not the cause. If you find them hard to get out, I stripped this one out, but I was still able to get out. If at first it feels like it's just spinning and it won't come out, I would recommend using a hand tool to strip it out. I might have to replace this screw. I'm not too sure yet. I have the tail light assembly out. You can see here. I'm just gonna lay it down here. I'm going to take this clip off the harness. And I'm going, it looks like I need a socket here and a socket here to get in there and check the bulbs. Now we're going to do the same thing with this side. We're going to take that bolt off and that bolt off. I'm going to look down in here. It's not going to focus, but it doesn't appear to be any corrosion that would cause the fuse to pop. So I'm going to go in there, pull the light bulbs, check the light bulbs, make sure all those connections are fine. And while we have this off, I'm going to check this harness right here. It doesn't appear that there's any corrosion in there to give me any indication of it popping a fuse. So we're going to leave this apart and use that part as part of our test to find out if this side may be the cause of why it's blowing the fuses. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm, I'm just going to leave this apart because what I'm going to do to help diagnose this to double check to make sure that this isn't the cause is when I re when I put the new fuse in the truck I'm gonna put everything together back one at a time and if the fuse pops at any of those things I know where my problem is I pulled all the bulbs out if you could see here I don't know if it's gonna focus or not around here where the connection goes in You'll see there's some white, clearish, crusty stuff, but what that is, that's not a problem. That's a lubricant that you're supposed to put on your bulbs before you put them in. Help from making them stick when you pull them out at a later date. As you can see here, everything looks clean inside of here. I'm going to pop one of these bulbs out and see if there's any corrosion in there, but I don't expect there to be just because of how nice it looks in here. See here, this is the center light of the tail light this will be the right side and if you look there on the right there's some corrosion in there so what i'm going to do is clean that up and take a look and see if those little prongs that are in there if they're burnt and see if they're in good condition i'm actually going to take this to the auto parts store and get a little advice on whether this should be replaced or not because i don't want to take the chances and keep burning through fuses and this may be the problem all right, I am under the truck right now, and previously I had had the bed off the truck when I replaced my fuel pump. And underneath, right there, is the ground wire that goes to your tail lights. So that'll be a half inch socket on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take the grinder and I'm going to clean up the rust on there. Take it back down to bare metal. And I'm going to clean up the clip that's on that wire and make sure that's bare metal too to make sure I have the best ground that I can possibly get right there. Another thing while I'm under here, there's a harness here that goes to some lighting 
and there's a harness here. This one I'm not too worried about. That one goes to the license plate light, but I'm going to double check it because I'm not sure if it's run off the same line or not. We'll make sure nothing's corroded in here or burnt on both of these. Let's take these harnesses apart. Take a look inside. That looks fairly clean in there. I don't see a problem with that. Inside there, that looks decent. So I can almost knock that out. And on the one that goes to the license plate light, that looks good. And that connection looks good. The only problem I can foresee with any of the wiring is when it rained, water might have got up in there. And it may be the problem with that, but we will find out when we start connecting everything back together. The four and a half inch angle grinder. It's just a drill master. I bought it. I think it was 15, 20 bucks at Harbor Freight. I don't have any real reason to own a grinder. I've used it maybe a handful of times, so I don't need anything special. I'm not going out and spending 50, 60, $100 on it, especially when I'm not going to use it all the time. If you need a grinder, I would definitely recommend buying one of these. Just if, if you're not going to use it all the time, just for the simple fact it's there when you need it. And if it breaks, it was 20 bucks. You can go get another one. All right, as you'd seen before, how rusty and crusty the frame was like, right in that area. See how that is a good spot for a ground. Well, I went in there with my grinder. I ground all that rust off and got as good as I could with that grinder and got me a good connection spot for the ground. And I came to the ground wire and I took that down to try to get as much of that rust off as I could. This one's hard to get to because you have to hold the wire and try to grind it while holding it. Probably not the safest thing, but it needed done. So now before I forget, I was going to start testing everything, but to know if anything works, that ground has to be hooked up. Do not forget to put that ground on first. You'll sit there and you'll put your lights on, you'll test them out. Nothing will come on, you'll get pissed. And then come to find out, that's not hooked up. Make sure you hook that up. All right, I'm back from the auto parts store. I have my new piece here. The other piece was all corroded. As you can see, this is all nice and shiny. What I'm gonna do now before I install all this, is I'm gonna take all this goop from the old install, get that off of there. Take it off of each light bulb. I have me a pack of some new bulb grease to put on there. So I got my packet of bulb grease here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the grease up to the top. We're not gonna make a mess. We're not gonna make this too complicated. So what we're gonna do is just open the top of it up and dip it in, dip this part into the top of the package where you have the grease pushed up. You don't need it a lot, just enough to lubricate and make sure they slide in and out. All right, I got the bulbs greased up. And I put the assembly back into the the tail light and put that bolt in there and that bolt in there. And now it's time to pop this tail light back into place. And since this is the one that I feel is the problem, we're gonna try this one first. But what we need to do is go back underneath the truck and hook up those harnesses that we had took apart before. That way we know we have power going up to the tail light. And be also before we put the tail light in, I have to put the fuse back in the fuse box. If one of them pops, we still know there's a problem. But if it doesn't, we should be good to go. Now that we got the headlight or the tail lights installed, we're gonna come down to the number nine. It's still got the it's still got the wrong fuse in it. So or the blown fuse. So I'm going to grab my fuse puller, reach in there, pull that out, come in here with the fuse in the number nine spot, push that fuse in. Now back here, I just have this mocked up right here. This tail light's plugged in and this tail light's plugged in. <clears throat> and what, I want, what I'm doing is making sure there's a full circuit. I don't know how this is wired. So by doing that, it'll 
ensure that the lights will work. So we're gonna go ahead and fire it up and see if it blows a fuse. All right, so now we come back and check. Tail light's good there. Tail light's good here. It's been running for a good five minutes now. The fuse hasn't blown, so I'm gonna bolt everything back up and we're gonna say the job was successful. Tail lights installed, I put the screws back in them, and made sure they were fastened in. The fuse hasn't blown. So when I was describing checking the, all the harnesses and everything on both tail lights and making sure the light bulbs were fine, you might as well check the harnesses anyhow because you have to unconnect them to pull the tail light out anyhow. So you might as well double check and make sure they look all right. So I did that on both sides since we tore both of them apart. So the end result is this tail light right here. It had a bad connection in it. It was all burn up. So it was an easy fix. It was 30 bucks for all the parts. Just ins installed the new part, put the new bulb or put the bulbs into them, and you were ready to go. I've made it home. And if you can tell by the title of the video, it was a fail. I dug myself in too deep. At least I have a new light bulb housing. The problem now is it seems that we might have an electrical issue, a voltage problem. At idle, everything's fine. Tail lights work great. Doesn't blow a fuse, nothing's wrong with it. As soon as I take off and go down the road, I hear that dreaded click and out go the light. I'm gonna do a little bit of research on it, see if I can do it myself. If not, we're gonna have to go to a professional. If you have any ideas, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll probably have it fixed by then, but it's always nice to know tips and tricks that other people have done.